My partner and I sleep on two twin beds pushed together so that we can pretend we own a bed big enough for both of us. Sometimes when we move in our sleep, the beds slide farther away from each other and we wake up with this gaping hole between us. Last night, she found me crying in our kitchen. She offered me her hands like a glass of warm milk with honey, but my sadness requires no soft touch. I have cried often enough in my life that it is no longer exciting or dangerous. I am grateful my partner has never been raped. I am grateful her mouth has never turned more ash than tongue, but sometimes it is so lonely feeling worthless all by myself. When I talk about the sickening feel of him that lingers even four years later, her eyes are a sky full of pity. Pity. The emotion that feasts while it talks about the starving. She doesn't have to leave the theater during the rape scene. The trigger warning does not apply to her. It is so easy to talk about what a shame it is when you've never had to feel ashamed of claiming the word survivor. Which is to say that the most difficult thing about her day is what to choose for breakfast. Which is to say that sometimes I wake up and there's so much distance between us, there's only the hardwood floor where I thought her body would be. Which is to say I love her, but my life is a shitty job she's never been poor enough to have to keep. <laughs> Suffering is not a contest. There is no prize if I win. There is nothing romantic about the scars on my hip bones. But there is a language barrier. Our difference strangles every conversation. We go to buy groceries and each man at the bus stop wears my rapist's face. She says the word love a little too forcefully and his hands are pushing me down. How do I explain to her that a Buick is not just a type of car? It is a graveyard. That I cannot have sex with the lights on because I will be able to see him there. How do I explain to her why our room is always so dark? When she talks about high school, she talks about the boys whose inexperienced hands didn't know how to touch a body. And all I can think of is how he didn't know how to keep his hands off my God. How do I explain to her that sometimes crying and having sex feel like the same thing? But loving someone means inventing your own language. It means turning herself into a basement during the tornado is turning herself into a safe space. It means turning her hands into a question and turning her hands away when the answer is no. In this new language, we erase pity and write in empathy. I do not need her to be sorry. I just need her to be listening. In this new language, we call trigger just an excuse for her to see another side of me. We call distance an excuse to rearrange geography. We call crying catharsis. The way after good sex or good cry, I feel so tired, I could just collapse and know the sadness is not an easy one. This conversation is not an easy one. But easy and worthwhile are not synonyms. So we wake up in the middle of the night and push our beds back together. <laughs> 